You're watching WECT News at 6. You'll remember seeing these startling images. Recorded the night Leland police officer Jacob Schwenk nearly died. A new state law changed the process that the public has to go through to see videos like this recorded on police cameras. Now, lawmakers said at the time it would increase transparency. But tonight in a special report, we show you what you'll have to do to shine light on what takes place in our community. When lawmakers drafted House Bill 972, the first line they put in declared police videos are not public record. Even though they are recorded by public employees working in cars and departments paid for by taxpayers. The governor, Pat McCrory, and other supporters argued the law improved transparency. The new law provides a clearer path for individuals to request access to and copies of law enforcement camera footage. That's true if you are seen or heard on the video. You can file a request to see it. But if the law enforcement agency refuses, the case goes to court and a judge decides. The public needs meaningful access to this video. Not just vague theoretical access if a court agrees to give it to them, but true meaningful access. The new law does not allow police departments to release video to the media or to the general public. We have to go to court and ask a judge to order it be released. And people are just different now. Mike James is the Leland police chief. He did not oppose releasing the video that showed Officer Jacob Schwenk being shot. Unless it's an investigation that can't be released, I think the outcome's gonna be the same. I think whoever requests the video will actually end up getting it. Uh, I don't see a judge, uh, you know, denying that request. Um, it's a little bit harder process than it used to be, but I, I do, I think it's good that, that they did this. We filed a request for the video. WECT assignment manager Brandon Wisbaum filed as a public citizen. It cost him $200, the same it would cost you. Do you take cards or is there any other? Okay, I can do, a card. do a card. We were the first to file in Brunswick County Court under the new law. It took the staff a little by surprise. I'm learning as we go also. <laughs> After about an hour. You have to take it to the courtroom to a superior court judge. Okay. And you just let them know what you're in there for. Once he's and he'll talk to you and if he signs it or she signs it, whatever, then you're going to take that form once it's signed to Michelle in superior court judge's office. Okay. She will sign it a court date. At first, we were told our court date would be in two months. Then we got a calendar date for the next week. On April 11th, Brandon and I went in front of Judge James Bell. Brandon's argument, quoting the new law, releasing the video would advance a compelling public interest. Remember, Chief James did not disagree. It's important for the public to see how quickly something uh, can go terribly wrong. Uh, this was a call uh, of a possible uh, drunk driver, in this case, uh, with the officer being shot. Um, of course, nothing's routine uh, in, in law enforcement, but, you know, if, if you want to classify a pretty simple call, that would have been a, a simple call, and it, it just took a matter of seconds for it to, right. to turn deadly. John Wessel, Leland's town attorney, told the judge this was his first experience with the new law. He said, quote, whether it is appropriate for the media to have it, meaning the video, is unclear. But he said if the court finds it appropriate, we have no objection. District Attorney John David told the judge it is not my practice to release these videos, but he had no problem with the town or the chief releasing it. David also asked Judge Bell to watch the video, and if he found a compelling public interest is served, David would not object to its release. Judge Bell did watch the video, and minutes later, he ruled it could be released to WECT. I think the one thing this showed, though, is that how new this law is, yes. that everybody in there was saying this is one of the first times we've tried this. Right. So what we've done here is really provide a roadmap <clears throat> of how this might go moving forward, at least in Brunswick County is concerned. I think it's, it's good, particularly in sensational events, to slow down and to be thorough and considered about what exactly is being you know, put out um, into the public square. And to the extent that this requires a judge who is a neutral arbiter uh, to balance both sides of the issue and determine whether or not a compelling public interest is served by release, that that's probably a good thing. 
So the key to this whole thing, friend, is even if a law enforcement agency wants to release it, they can't to the general public or to the media. Mm -hmm. It takes a judge ordering it to be released. And uh, now they can give it to other law enforcement agencies for training or investigations, even to the DA, but not to any of you out there or to us. We have to request it. And John, we are the first TV station to make this request under the new law. Here in this area we are. Yes, we are. Now there's a radio station in Charlotte requested video of a police shooting. The DA's office and the uh, uh, the prosecutor out there and the police department's attorney both ruled uh, argued against it because there was an investigation still going on. The judge said no. Two months later, the same radio station, after the investigation ended, asked for the video again and got it. So it seems like if an investigation is going on, you may be less apt to get it. If it's cleared, maybe a little easier. All right, Tal. So how was the crowd out there, John? Well, Ashley, I didn't see an empty seat in the house during Mr. Trump's address. I kept looking around here inside Trask Coliseum and every seat was full. It was definitely a pro-Trump crowd here. Now, at one point, uh, a protester did get up, but that did not stop the flow that he had of his talk against Hillary Clinton. Uh, Trump began uh, almost immediately in his address uh, criticizing Clinton and also criticizing President Obama. He criticized their policies and their decisions, calling them at one point incompetent and saying that she would be four more years of Obama and maybe worse. Very few minority supporters in the audience. I did notice that today as I was looking around during the address. And Trump really needs to try to court more of those minority groups to his camp if he's going to have a chance at winning in November. After the address, I talked to two men about why they are supporting Donald Trump when others may not. Is there a little bit of scare? We need it. Now, many of the uh, things Mr. Trump talked about were some of the same things that we have heard at other campaign stops, but he did address a couple of North Carolina issues, including voter ID, which of course is uh, being dealt with right now in Raleigh and in the court system. We'll have more on that coming up at the top of the hour on WECT News at 6. We need somebody to come in with a broom. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani riled up the capacity crowd before bringing Donald Trump to the stage. Trump gave the thousands of supporters what they wanted, plenty of criticism of Hillary Clinton and of President Obama. Hillary Clinton is going to be four more years of Obama, but maybe worse. Before the rally, I asked Trump about an issue that concerns millions of people along the coast, drilling offshore for oil and gas. We want to make sure the people around here, because those are the ones that have to really put up with it, we want to make sure that they're okay with it. And I know there is a lot of uh, anxiety from the people in the surrounding area, and I would want to make sure that they're okay with it. That would be very important to me. Trump promised to return to North Carolina, saying it's important if he's going to win in November. The crowd left satisfied that they had heard from the candidate they can trust. Trump, is, I feel, is better than Hillary because he's not a liar. Hillary's just been called a lie after lie, and we can't, we can't vote for a liar. And honestly, that's why I want to support Donald Trump. Thanks. Chef Keith Rhodes has won many awards for his culinary talents, along with being voted best chef in Wilmington several times. Keith was nominated for best chef in the Southeast in 2011, and that's when he went on Top Chef, the network TV reality show. Well, I interviewed Keith Rhodes for this week's one-on-one -on -one podcast, and he told me even though he was eliminated fairly early on Top Chef, the experience was invaluable. But for me, with the show, what was really good was seeing the dynamic. It got a chance for me to be around some other chefs from around the states in a little bit more of a personal type of manner. Mm -hmm. It let me know that what I was doing here in Wilmington was on par or even higher than what some of these other guys were doing. Now you can hear about what went on behind the scenes at Top Chef and uh, the rest of the podcast with Keith Rhodes. It's available right now. Just click on this story on WECT.com or our mobile news app. The one-on-one -on -one with John Evans podcast also available now on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play. It's a free download on all of those platforms.